Well, amen. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Father's Day Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning. Oh, I know you can do a better job than that. Come on now. God's been good to you. God has blessed us. Well, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you are a father in the house, please just raise your hand. Let's give God praise for all of our fathers that have joined us today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is your day. This is our day. We celebrate you for all that you do. You know, I was talking to the men this morning, and I was walking in a little bit late to church today. And my brother said, he's got young kids, so he's got long nights. And, you know, I said, I'm kind of like that athlete where they say the, the first hit of the game, you know, it just introduces you to what's going on really here. And uh, I'm a first quarter dad, so I'm an early dad. You know, it's like I just got hit in the face. Like, oh, my Lord, what is this? But I'm learning and growing. But today we celebrate all of our fathers for being with us today. We celebrate you. And I believe we're going to have donuts with dads today as well. So it's going to be a good time. Well, how many are ready to praise and worship God this morning? I just want to share with you one of my favorite scriptures that I love. And it says this in Philippians. It says, there has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. How many of you know that God is with you and God is leading you to victory today? You gotta know that wherever you are, God is with you and he's leading you to victory. And you may be facing some difficulties in your life, some hard times. You may be dealing with something in your mind, with your body, with your family, with your career, just with your future that you're thinking of. But you need to be encouraged by this scripture in Philippians today because it's letting you know that what you're looking at, you know, this is just one chapter of a big book. For some of you, it's just a section of a chapter, meaning that there is more in store and that there is more that God is doing in your life. I believe that you may be in a difficult part of life right now, but you got to believe that you're going to laugh again. You got to believe that you're going to love again. You got to believe that you're going to smile again. You got to believe that God has taken to you to a point of victory. That what you're experiencing right now is not the end, but that God has so much in store for you. But here is the key. It's what we do on Sunday mornings. Today, you got to tune the enemy out because the enemy will tell you that it's not going to get better. The enemy tell you that this is the way that you're going to have to live. The enemy will tell you that this is the way that you're stuck. The enemy will tell you that you're not qualified. The enemy will tell you that you're not getting the promotion. The enemy will tell you all types of things. But it doesn't matter what the enemy will tell you. Because the only thing that we're focused on this morning is what God is saying. And that God is saying that you're a, you're a victim, you're a victor and not a victim that you are a champion, that you are more than a conqueror, and God is getting ready to do a great thing in your life. How many of you believe and declare that on this Sunday morning? Well, amen. Let's go to God in prayer all together. Let's lift up your hands to the heavenlies all around the sanctuary. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that we know that we have victory in you, Lord. That there is a place, Lord, where our pain, Lord, can change, Lord. Our pain can change the promise, Lord. Our hurt can change the healing, Lord. It's called the house of God, Lord. And we are happy to be in your house this morning. For we know, Lord, that this is a house of blessings, Father, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as we praise you, Lord, as we worship you, Lord, as the word goes all, all, right, all out around this entire sanctuary, Lord, that your blessings will rain down, Lord. Send life-changing words to people today, Lord, that when they hear it, Lord, they will have a change of course, Lord, that they may have been going one way, Lord, but we know that you're leading them a whole nother way, Lord, to victory, to healing, to blessings, and to a promising future. Be with us on this day, Lord. Come into this place in your mighty way, Lord, so that we can feel your power, we can feel your presence, Lord, and we can feel your deliverance on this day. We give you praise because you are worthy. You are worthy. 
of all of the praise. Lord, we pray these things in your precious name. Let all the people of God shout. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary. Jesus is the only God. 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 He's the King of all kings. Every nation and creed will lift up their voices to say, Jesus is the only God.
Jesus is the only. Jesus is the only God. Jesus is the only God. Jesus is the only God. He's the King of all kings. Every nation and creed will lift up their voices to say. You're the only living God. 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 He's the King of all kings. Every nation and creed will lift up their voices to say. you over and over not just one time not just two times not just three times but over and over God has been blessing you come on give him a hand clap of praise one more time for blessing you even on today amen amen if you're here today I want you to do me a favor let's go to God in a word of prayer today if you need prayer I want you to come to the altar today I want to give you some inspiration to tell you that you can make it through this you can make it through whatever you go through. Play that song, You Can Make It Through This. There's a song called, You Can Make It Through This. We're believing today.
that God is going to do something in your life. How many need somebody need God to do something in your life? Just say amen. So we're going to come to the altar, and we're going to come to the altar believing. Somebody say believing. Believing that God will do what he said he would do. How many of you believe that God will do what he said he would do? So I want you to just bow your heads and just talk to God right now. We're celebrating fathers today. Pray for all of our fathers that are in the audience today. Pray for all of our fathers, even on today. Pray that God continues to help them through whatever they may be going through. We know it's not easy being a dad. It's not easy being a father, but we believe with God help, with God's help, nothing is impossible. So pray right now for all of the fathers that are in the audience today. And even those at the altar, there's people around you. You don't know what they're going through, but you know what God can do in their life because he's done it in your life. And so you are a living testimony of what God can do for somebody else. So I want you to pray for all of those that are here at the altar, even in the audience. If you're in the audience here today and you've got a special prayer request, just raise that hand high out in the audience. Just raise that hand high. We're believing all these hands raised. We're believing that God will intercede in whatever they need and whatever they have going on. We're believing it and we're claiming it in the name of Jesus. That when we bow our heads and when we humble our hearts, that at the end of the day, that you will be able to make it through whatever you're going through, even on today. Pray right now. Pray for those on our sick and shut-in list. We have a prayer list that we release every week, and people call the church, and they let us know about what they're going through. And we say that we're going to have the church pray for you. So pray right now for all of those on the prayer list. Again, in the foyer, there's the prayer booth, and we put our names on there, and we put our needs on there and our ministers pray for those that are on that list and so we're believing that God is going to do some things in their life. Bishop Mirabel, do you believe? I know the bishop believes and so as Bishop Mirabel believes I want you to believe along with Bishop Mirabel that God does hear and answer prayers. He tells me all the time about all the miracles that he's seen God do and so if he's seen it I believe that you can see it also even in your life today. I'm going to ask Pastor Dan to just come and lead us in a quick word of prayer. And then the choir is going to sing this song called You Can Make It Through This. They're going to inspire you today. Today is not a day to be sad. Today is a day to be happy. Today is not a day to, to, to be uh, in sorrow. Today is a day to rejoice. Somebody say rejoice. We got to have joy. Somebody say joy. And so we're going to believe it. We're going to claim it. How many know that what you speak? can also lead the direction that you're going to go in. So we're going to save you today. This song is called The Affirmation. You've got to affirm what God will do in your life. So we're going to lift him up, and we're going to say you can make it through this after our pastor prays. Give Pastor Dan a great big hand clap as he leads us today. Yes, let us pray together on this Father's Day, Lord. We just thank you for a heavenly Father, Lord. We thank you for a heavenly Father, a great Father, Lord. When times are difficult, we thank you, Lord, that you are always there, Lord. We thank you on this day that we know that you are looking down on us, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and know that you love each and every one of us, Father, Lord, and everyone that's at this altar today, Lord. You see what they're dealing with, Lord. You see what's on their mind, Lord. You, you know, Lord, what they need, Lord. And we're just grateful that you're a great provider, Lord. So we just pray, Lord, that you come in your mighty way, Lord. Intervene, Lord, in your mighty way. I pray on behalf of all the faithful people that are here today, Lord. Come into their hearts, Lord. Come into their minds. Come into their body, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Hear their cries this morning. Hear their prayers, Lord, and be with them, Lord. We know, Lord, they may have questions on their mind, questions on their heart, questions regarding the future, Lord, but we know that you've got an answer, Lord because you're our great father, Lord. You are our heavenly father. You are the prince of peace, Lord. For anyone that's come to the altar, Lord, they may be dealing with sickness in their life, Lord, sickness with their family, Lord, pain within their body, Father, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, that we are in your presence right now, Father, Lord, and you are the great doctor, Father, Lord. So I just pray over them right now, Lord, and believe and declare that healing is coming to their body, Lord. That healing is coming to that family member that they're lifting up today, Lord. That healing is coming into their life, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. 
Someone is here today, Lord, they may be dealing with something with their mind, Father Lord, with depression, Lord, with anxiety, Lord, over their future, Lord. Right now, Lord, I just pray over this altar right now that the people that are here believing right now that the faith is rising up in their life, Lord, that fear is going out, Lord, that doubt is going out, Lord, that faith is rising up, Lord, and they will experience an energy, Lord, like they have never experienced before, knowing that you make all things new in their life right now, Lord, and that they're going to have a new walk, Lord, that they're going to have a new talk, Lord, that when they walk out of this place, Lord, and they look around at the beauty of this world, they'll be able to see and feel in their spirit that it is a new day, Lord, because you intervened in their situation and you made all things new, Lord. We thank you for this word that we're receiving right now from this praise team that we can't make it. We can't make it. We can't make it. If you believe we can make it, give God praise all around the sanctuary and shout amen. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's stand on our feet and believe it today. that you can make it through this. I want you to do me a quick favor. Stand on your feet. And I want you to go around to five or 10 people around the building and just tell them you can make it through this. Just greet somebody today in the name of the Lord. Say hello to somebody. Tell them you can make it through this. I want you to just inspire somebody in this place. Somebody needed to hear from you today to just let them know that you can make it through this. Come on, greet somebody this morning. Inspire them. Somebody needs to know that their story is not over. And that God is working. God is moving. He's going to do what he said he would do. He's going to heal. He's going to bless. I want somebody in this place to know that you can make it through. Here today in God's house. On this Sunday morning. On this Father's Day morning. Somebody needs to be inspired that you're going to make it through this today. I want you to just bow your heads before we are seated today and just say, Lord, I believe that I can make it through this. Father, you've done it before, and I believe that you can do it again. You've delivered me before. You've blessed me before. You've woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. And because of that, I'm a living testimony of what God can do. So repeat after me. Say, I believe it. I claim it in the name of Jesus. I give you the praise. I give you the honor. And I give you the glory. If you believe it today, give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Somebody say it one more time. I can make it through this. Amen, amen. Give God some praise in this place just one more time and you may be seated in God's house. Good morning Mount Zion. How's everybody doing this morning? Is God been good to you? Just say amen. 
to all of our fathers, just raise your hand and wave your hand. All of our fathers, give our fathers a great big hand clap. We celebrate you on this Father's Day morning. Remember, after services, we got our donut trees out there. And if you're with your dad, you can have donuts with dad. So be here with us after services today. But I want you to do me a favor. I want you to prepare your minds and hearts for our giving time. If God has blessed you, just say amen. If God has done anything in your life, I want you to raise your hand. If God has been good to you, if God has been there for you in your life. So when we give, we give because God first gave to us. And we believe that the church is his bride. We believe that his church is his vessel to continue to do the work that he wants to happen here on this earth. So we give to God's house and blessing God's church because we believe that when we bless God, God is going to do what? He's going to bless us. And there's anybody here who needs a blessing, just say amen. Amen. So we give today knowing that God will do some things in our lives. So prepare your minds and hearts. Think about it today. Someone mentioned to me that the Cash App is having some trouble. So use our Givelify on today and we'll check that out. Or you can try Cash App. I'm not sure if it's working or up, but I've heard some things around the city about Cash App. But also you can give, um, of course, through our website. Also text to give and also the Givelify app. And also thank you to those that even when you're away, you still give to God. You still bless God through your giving. So at this time, before we go into our tithe and offering period, let's watch our ministry announcements to see all of the great things that God is doing. It's time to get excited for Summer Sundays at Mount Zion. Vacation Bible School for kids and youth will be held on Sundays the whole month of July. During this special month, don't miss all the fun activities. We have special guests, paint day, game day, and even the Akron Zoo is coming to Mount Zion with amazing animals. Then there's our community block party, Sunday, July 28th. Wear your comfortable clothes or your Mount Zion t-shirts and praise with us. After 11 a.m. service, we will have a cookout with inflatables for the kids, community vendors, line dancing, an ice cream truck, and more. Join us for a great time. We are celebrating Dr. Macon's new book about his life and journey called Memories, Dreams, and Moments, available now on Amazon. If you want to be greatly entertained, educated, and inspired by the life of our pastor, get a copy today. Also, we're celebrating Pastor Larry as a new board member for Kent State University and now advisor to the governor of Ohio through the Office of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives. We have now started our connect groups. Our bowling group has started with upcoming outings being scheduled. Our golf group had their first connect with more coming in July. The travel group is planning a trip for this year and the foodie group has meetups planned at many restaurants. If you want to join one of these connect groups, sign up at the connect desk in the foyer. Lastly, this summer, we want you to do a few things. First, pray for the ministry at the Mount Zion Prayer Garden. Any day of the week, pull up and pray. Also, our church is being used for various school programs, city summer camps, and even senior wellness during the week. Here are just a few of the ministries we do and support the entire year. For 2025, we are releasing a new model for the church. When someone asks you, what is Mount Zion about? We want you to tell them Mount Zion is a place where you will be safe, healthy, healed, and saved. Thank you. And remember, we are Mount Zion. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Let's prepare our minds and hearts for the giving time as we give to God and as we thank God 
for all that he's done and all that he's doing for us. And we're going to read that responsibly. And also to all of those that give online who are watching today, we thank you for supporting this ministry. All we do and all we're able to do is because of the faithful people of God. So we thank all of those in the audience and all of those even watching today that support God through their giving and that are faithful to his word. I believe that your obedience will never be overlooked because God sees and God knows what we do. And when he sees us and when he knows what we're doing, I believe God does something. He blesses us according to that which we are doing for him because we believe that when we do for God, God always does more for us. And so as we give to God, we don't give grudgingly. We give cheerfully knowing that God only asks us for a small amount, but we know that God does so much more in our lives, even for what he asks us for. The Bible says this, and let's read it responsibly. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. I love what this text unpacks. It talks about many things. It talks about how you'll get excessive blessings, how God will rebuke the devourer for your sake, how God will give you protected results, how it will give you what we call a guaranteed harvest. The Bible speaks of how all nations will call you blessed and also how you will be a delightful land. I want to hit on those throughout the weeks to just let you know all of the blessings that God will do. But I want you to remember this. Remember, God always gives you a good return on your investment. That's why there's no investment like a kingdom investment. That's why we should always put God first in our life. Because when I invest in God, I believe that God blesses everything that I touch. So as you give today, ask God to bless everything you touch because you were faithful to God today. If you have an offering or a tithe in your hand, or even if you're an online giver, raise your hand today, and we're just going to raise it in victory, knowing and believing that God will bless us for our giving today. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. We thank you, God, for your power, for your healing today. We believe we are healed by your stripes, God. And so we give today knowing and believing that your healing power is even in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. Even online, you can give right now. God is Lord.
Let us all stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise, and you may be seated in God's house, in God's house. Give our music minister a great big hand clap. Can you please acknowledge them for blessing us? It's not easy to get up every morning and to praise and to usher in praise, but they do it every Sunday morning. So we're thankful to them for blessing us through song and through music. Today, as we get into the word of God, if you have a Bible with you, you can Put a marker in it for Matthew 5, 13. That's a text that I want you to remember and to look and to reference throughout the week. Matthew 5, 13. Just one of the texts that we're going to go into, but put a, put a little bookmark, bookmark in that. And we're going to hit on that as one of our texts. But I want you to read that throughout the week. I believe God is going to reveal something to you that will help you in your life as to who you are in Christ Jesus because I believe that everyone all followers of God are somebody in Christ Jesus before we go into the word of God I want to give you a quick story there's a story that is told about the pearly gates of heaven where basically a new crowd of people showed up so God did this as they showed up to heaven God split the men and the women up he split them up as they came to the gates of heaven then he asked the men, he said, you know what, men, I want you to form two lines. He said, one line for those that figured, those men that were in charge of their wives down on earth and wore the pants in the household. And he said, here's another line for the men whose wives were in charge of them and told them what to do. Well, the guys started shuffling each line, and eventually the line where the wives were in charge of the husband, that line was a mile long. And the line of the men that were taking charge over their wives had only one man. And God saw this, and he got angry, and he looked at that line of all those dominant men, and he said, he said, you should be ashamed of yourselves. I, he said, I, I created you in my image, and you men weren't in charge of your own home, and you were supposed to be strong and courageous. And look over here in this one line. I've got only one of my sons who stood up to be the man over his wife, and you need to learn from him. And so we turn to that one man. And he said, tell him, my son, he said, he said, how did you manage to take charge over your wife down on earth and be the only one in this line? And so the man looked at God and he said, you know what, God? He said, I don't know because my wife told me to stand here. <laughs> Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. Today, Father, we need to hear a word from you. Hide me behind your cross as I preach and teach your word. I pray right now for your people. I, I pray, God, that you would feed us with your bread of heaven. Give us something in our system that will carry us throughout the week and throughout the month and even throughout the year. Bless our lives even today. Speak to our mind, body, and soul. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Today I want to talk and just take a moment to preach to you from the subject of you are a living testimony. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I am a living testimony. You know, this is the message to the man or to the woman who doesn't understand why they went through what they went through. This is the message to the man or the woman who wanted to know what is the purpose for your pain. What I want to say to you today is that maybe, just maybe, God is using what you went through in life to release a message to the world. Maybe God is trying to help you to release a message to your family or a message to the people in your sphere of influence. 
You know, the truth of the matter is, if you're alive today, it is because God has a testimony in you. God has brought you out of something, and the Bible teaches that God didn't bring you out of what you've come out of just to bring you out. He didn't do it just to do it. God brought you out and, and brought you through to share with somebody else. See, God wants you to share that he is a forgiver. He wants you to share that God can heal. He wants you to share that God can deliver. He wants you to share that God does give second chances. Is there anybody here living in a second chance? He wants you to share that God still loves and God still does protect. You can sit around like, like he hasn't done anything for you, but if it had not been for the Lord by your side, you wouldn't be standing here today. If it hadn't been but for his grace and mercy, truth be told, we are never totally in the clear. We are always close to calamity, but we are saved by the grace and the mercy of God. If it had not been again for his grace and for his mercy, you might not be listening to me today. You might not be present in the sanctuary or even watching online. You might be somewhere else between a rock and a hard place. And that's why every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day is a day of testimony. Every day is a new day making you a witness to the goodness of God. Every day there is something to share about what God has done in your life. The question is asked why? Because you are still able to live, move, and breathe and have your very being. And because of that, every chance you get, what are you? You are a living testimony. Or should I say a living witness for Jesus? Now somebody may be asking, why is my testimony important? Why is what God has brought me through, why is that so important? What's so important about my witness, if you will, about others seeing what God has done in my life? Well, well here's why. Because the truth is we live in a sin-sick world. We live in a messed up world. Turn on the TV or get on your phone or even walk downtown or move around a little bit and you'll figure out that mess is all around us. There's mayhem all around us. That's why God-fearing and Christ-following people are needed on this earth. In the beginning of Matthew 5.13, the Bible verse that I asked you to reference, the Bible says this, you are the salt of the earth. Now, what does that mean? It means this. It means Jesus call, calls on his followers to be the salt of the earth, to be the preservative. Salt is what we call a preservative. Say preservative. Now, salt holds things up so that they last longer. And see, God needs his people, the believers, to be preservatives of humanity, to be the preservers of humanity in a rotting world, a world falling into sin. A world falling into godlessness, a world falling into immorality, into chaos and, and resulting judgment. It's our job as the people of God to be the salt of the earth. Now many times we wonder how can we do our part as Christians? How can we do our part? How can we save our communities? We talk about it all the time. How can we save our children and how can we save our youth? Well, it, well, it all starts with you being a witness for Jesus. And it's easier than you think. You see, Paul said in the Bible, he said, we speak the truth of God. We speak the truth before God as messengers of God. So God didn't bring you this far just to bring you this far. No, the experiences that God brought you through are meant to help you in the process of bring others to Jesus Christ. Now, you know the trick of the enemy is to try to silence you and to try to silence the people of God. If, if he can silence you, if he can stop the work that we are called to do, and if he can stop the work that, that God has put us on this earth to do, if he can keep you away from the reward that God wants to give you for your testimony, that's what he'll try to do. But the Bible says those who believe in the Son of God have a testimony in them. You want to make a difference? You want to make a difference in this world? You want to know uh, what your worth to the kingdom is? Remember, all God wants you to do in this life is he wants you to share your testimony with somebody else. There's got to be somebody in this place that has a testimony. If you're not in the hospital today, you got a testimony. 
If you got some money in your pocket, you got a testimony. If you've got some family around you and somebody to call, you ought to give God some praise because you got a testimony. If God woke you up this morning, if you got a job, if you got clothing on your back, if you've got food on your table, you got a testimony of how good God has been. If you ever lost something, but you still kick it, you've got a testimony of God's sustaining grace. If you ever lost a close family member and you're not in a mental institution, you got a testimony about how God has brought you through. Do I have any survivors of loss in this place that have a testimony that I made it simply by the grace of God? If you had a moment where you could have been dead and gone from this earth, but you're still living, that's God's testimony for you to share with the world. See, there's life-changing power when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And see, people need that relationship more than ever. They need that testimony from you. They need to hear how you begin your relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and they need to know how God has helped you along this journey. People need to hear how God has made a difference in your life. Can any th anybody think about how knowing Jesus has made a difference in your life? How knowing the Lord has made a difference in your journey? Has made a difference in your situation? Now in 1 Peter chapter 2. 9 through 12, one of the texts that I even have on the screen. It basically says this in the New Testament. It says, we are chosen by God to speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference that God has made for you. Now, see, that's what your testimony is meant for, to turn you into a witness for the Lord. And the good thing about your testimony is you don't have to argue the case for Jesus. You, you are just asked to be a witness. Now, when you go to a courtroom, what does, what does the lawyer do? The lawyer is the advocate. The, the lawyer does what? The lawyer calls the witness to the stand. And the job of the witness is not to prove the truth within their own right. No, it's not to even press the jury for a verdict. No, the that's the job of the attorney. That's the job of the advocate. But the job of a witness is simply to report what happened to them or what they saw. See, that's your job. That's the job of the people of God. God just wants you to be around and simply report what happened to you? To simply report what Jesus has done in your life. See, we want to see our church grow more and more. And our church is only going to grow and it will grow if we simply go around and be a witness for Jesus. And see, that's the great thing that you can do right now. That's what I want you to do this summer. You got to be a witness for Jesus. Now, somebody asked the question, how do I invite people to Mount Zion? How, how do I be a witness to, to bring people even into church? What, what's the best way to get people here? And, and how do I bring people to Jesus? If, it's not on Facebook. It's not just Instagram. It's not just YouTube, but it's you. It's the people of God. See, see, we, we, it's you that can bring others to Christ. It's, it's wherever you go in the week. It's encountering whomever, who, whomever you may encounter. It's, it's sharing the good things that God has done in your life. See, somebody here today knows that if it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't be here today. Somebody here, to, to, here today knows that if it wasn't for Jesus' help, you wouldn't still be married. Or if God wasn't watching over you, you wouldn't have bounced back from that relationship. If it wasn't God watching over you, you wouldn't have been able to raise those kids all by yourself. If you weren't a praying person, you wouldn't be able to make it on your job. If it wasn't for you being a praying mother or a praying father or a praying grandfather or a praying grandmother, your son or daughter or grandchild wouldn't be alive today. See, somebody here today experienced the death that could have taken you out, but you're still standing. 
And see, that's what we, the people of God, have to be a witness to today. We got to be a witness to the life-changing, miracle-working, life-sustaining, never-changing, and constant power that comes with a friend that sticks closer than a brother, that comes with a relationship with the Lord. We are a witness, but Jesus is the advocate. He's so many things in my life, and I wish there were a few witnesses here today of what he's been in your life. He's been a doctor when I'm sick. He's been a sympathizer when I'm down. He's guarded me when I was vulnerable. He guided me when I was lost. He was a healer when I needed it. He cleansed me when I was dirty. He was a forgiver when I needed it the most. He was a discharger when I was in debt. He was a deliverer when I was captured and a rescuer, rescuer when I needed his help. But here's the good news for you. He's also a rewarder of the diligent. And see, after all that, somebody's going to ask you. They're going to ask you, who in the world got you out of all of that? Who discharged you? Who, who guided you? Who healed you? Who forgave you? Who delivered you? Who cleansed you? Who helped you? When you give them that testimony. And that's just not that their, their curiosity. That's just not their curiosity. That's the Holy Spirit stepping in. And that's what all you got to do is say one word. You just got to say one answer. When somebody asks you, who did that? Who is the basis of your testimony? I want you to say one five-letter word. Can somebody be a witness to the King of Kings? Can somebody be a witness to the Lord of Lords? Can somebody be a witness to the pathway of peace? Can somebody be a witness to the shelter in the time of storms? Can somebody be a witness to the person who was your strength when you were weak? When somebody asked you, who did it in your life? All you got to say is J-E-S-U-S. Can somebody say Jesus? Can somebody say that name? Is there anybody in this place that is a follower of Jesus Christ? If you believe it today, give God some praise in this place. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Bread of heaven. Jesus. Heal it when I'm sick. Jesus, shelter when I'm in a storm. Jesus, can somebody be a witness for Jesus? Stand on your feet. Somebody, will you be a witness for Jesus? Because can't nobody, can't nobody deny a satisfied customer. Do I got any satisfied customers in the house today? To what Jesus has done in your life. I'm asking you a question. I just want to challenge you today. As a satisfied customer, you know, whenever I go to a restaurant, the first thing I do is I try to talk to people that are coming out. I say to them, how was the food? How was the service? Did they treat you right? What was the good thing on the menu that I should get myself? You know why? Because they're coming out the door as a satisfied customer. And that's what we need to do. We need to walk this earth like a satisfied customer. We need to tell folk how God brought you out. We need to share the love of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to brag. Today's Father's Day. I want to brag about my father for a quick moment. Give our pastor a great big hand clap. That's what he does. I want you to see my father's book. Can you put it on the screen, my father's book? Repeat after me. Say, Memories dreams and moments I'd love for you to get this book we, don't, we ain't even dispersing it over the church you can get it from Amazon come right away but this book is is about his life and all it is it's my father's testimony people ask all the time how does he do what he does you know what he's a living testimony of how God has brought him out and so this story is the epitome of this of over 40 years of ministry People ask the question, how has he moved mountains and, and how has he done it? Simply by sharing his story. Never forget this. Come on, you can give him some praise for that. Never forget this. Your story will build a relational bridge 
that Jesus can walk across from your heart to theirs. The Bible says this in 1 Peter 3.15. It says, be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope that you have in you. So now is the time when people need to see the hope that you have in you. Somebody needs to know how your life looked like before you met Jesus. Somebody needs to know what made you realize that you needed Jesus in your life. Somebody needs to know what was the difference that Jesus made to turn you around. Now somebody may be asking, and this is not a bad thing, somebody may be asking, what's in it for me? Maybe, just maybe, you will find that your life experiences, that what you went through didn't just happen for nothing, but your test became a testimony. Your trauma and the, the drama you went through became your witness to show you that what you went through was not in vain. You were used by God to make an impact. You were used by God for a purpose. You were used by God. And you were a bit, you are a part of a bigger plan. Now, I don't know who needed to hear this message, but I want to tell you that you are a part of a bigger plan than you think. I want to tell you that God actually had a plan and a purpose, and it was for your good. But you actually were went through what you went through to make a huge impact in this world. See, what he has brought you through was meant to expose people in this world to the grace, to the mercy, and to the deliverance of Jesus Christ. And so what does all this mean? It all means that you are valuable to the kingdom of God. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, raise your hand. That means you're valuable because you believe in Jesus Christ. You're valuable to this church. You're valuable to the saving of lives. So don't forget what God has brought you through and don't forget how he delivered you. But here's the main text. Here's the main witness in Luke 12, verse 8. I want to read the message version to you. It says this. It says, stand up for me among the people that you meet and the Son of Man will stand up for you before all God's angels. What does the Living Bible says? It says, I assure you of this. I, the Messiah, will publicly honor you in the presence of God's angels if you publicly acknowledge me here on earth as your friend. What's the message? If you stand up for Jesus, he'll stand up for you. If you represent Jesus, he'll represent you. If you represent the Father, he'll be there for you. If you defend him, he'll defend you. If you carry his sign, he'll carry your burdens. If you carry his banner, he'll carry you through. If you hold the line for him, here's the good news. He'll hold the line for you. If you'll expose him to the world, he'll cover you even today. I want to ask you the question, will you be a witness for Jesus Christ? If you believe it, give him a hand clap one more time. Bow your heads today. If there's somebody here today, I want to just express to you that we want everybody to be a witness for Jesus. But the most important thing is we want you to have a relationship with him. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship or you never accepted it into your life, I want to tell you today, you can be in relationship with Jesus. We believe that you need a relationship to be able to have hope in this hopeless world. If you want to get ahead in life, it does not start absent in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So as every head is bowed, as every saint is praying in this place, I want to offer Christ to anybody here in this church, anybody here today. If you want to accept Christ into your life for the first time and you want to say yes to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to take a step and I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand high today. Maybe you have done some things, but you need repentance. Maybe you've done some things and you want to turn away from it. All you have to do is accept Christ into your life and he will forgive you of all you've done, even in your past today. But if you haven't accepted Christ into your life, but you want to do it today, I just want you to raise that hand high if you're here today. Nobody's looking up. The saints are praying. If you're here today 
and you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, but today you want to say, Lord, I want to accept you into my life. I want you to raise that hand high today in victory, saying, Lord, I accept you today. Lord, I want to become one of those witnesses for Jesus Christ. If you're here today, raise that hand high. If you're here today, maybe you've accepted Christ into your life, but you don't have a church home. I want you to have a church home here today. We would love to be your church family. You can accept Christ into your life, but you need a church home also. And so if you want to accept a church home as Mount Zion, you can raise your hand. Maybe you're here today and maybe you need special prayer if you're here today and you need a special breakthrough in your life. Raise that hand high. We're going to pray for you for in a moment and believe that God will do some things in your life. Hold that hand up in the air. I want to share with you if you've raised your hand for any of those things. I want you to fill out that card in the pew that is in front of you or go to the welcome desk and, and fill out the card at the connect desk where they will welcome you and you can give them your information and we want to share with you the next steps. Even online, there's a QR code on the screen and you can put your camera up to that and even share with us that you want to accept Christ or join the church or need special prayer in your life today. Let's bow our heads and talk to God. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We pray, God, that somebody here today hears a word from you, Father. Be with them. Touch them. Bless their life even on today. I pray right now for those who need a special breakthrough and a special healing through prayer. We believe, God, as we pray throughout this service that you are going to deliver and that you're going to help. So we pray that as they leave today, that the burden will be lifted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that we can be a witness for you even on today. Thank you, God, that we make the difference. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise and consider yourselves dismissed. God bless you. Don't forget to stick around. We've got some donuts and coffee in the foyer fellowship. And let's have some great time on this Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everyone. God